so that we can keep a copy of this. So I hope this one's useful for you all because I'm, I'm going to uh, use it as well with my students this year. And, you know, it's, it's tough pulling them away from what they know already from Google tools. So I think it's going to be useful. Um, all right. So I'm going to get started. I see there's a handful of you in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and get ready. And, uh, that way we can get out of here uh, sooner. So these are the four things that I'm gonna cover with you today. Um, I'm gonna show you how to set it up. I'm gonna show you how to organize it. And by it, I mean a OneNote. It's called Class Notebook, just so that you know what we're gonna be working with. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to create pages inside of OneNote. And then I'm gonna show you how to differentiate for your students that have, for example, dyslexia or students that have trouble reading on a computer screen. So those kinds of differentiations I'm going to show you. All right, so here's how we, we go about this. The first thing we're going to do is that I'm going to uh, show you how to get there, right? So let me stop sharing here for a second. And I'm going to share a different part of my screen so you can see. All right, so here I am on my YISD uh, portal. Give me a thumbs up if you see this portal on your screen. But, uh, Hold on, dude. Yes. All right. Okay, so the, the point that I'm going to make here is that there's two tools that work together. It's Class Notebook and Microsoft Teams. But today's session is not going to be about Teams. It's just going to be about Class Notebook. Okay? So the first thing we got to do is we got to go into Teams. So we, we're going to go up here to the App Launcher. Okay, And you see that I have OneNote here, and I also have Teams. We're going to be making an interactive notebook that allows us to give each student in our class a specific place where they can keep their notes. And also it's going to give us the ability to push materials to their notebook. So it's like if you're asking them at the end of the class period to glue stuff into their notebook. Well, this is the same thing, but you're going to be the one distrib distributing the material to the student. Okay, so you're going to go here to teams. Okay? I'm going to make this uh, full screen so you can see it better. If only I could see that. Okay. All right, so this is going to load up, and you're going to see that I'm going into something called Microsoft Teams, right? The only reason I'm going into here is so that you can see how I create the class first. Okay, because remember what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how set up a class notebook. I'm going to show you how to create pages, how to organize them, and how to differentiate. Okay. So here you see that I already have two teams that I'm going to be using this year. Okay. But I'm just going to create one just so that you can see uh, how you get access to the notebook. Okay. So here on Teams, there's a button that says join or create team. Okay. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to ask me if I want to join a team with a code. This is like when in Google Classroom, you ask a student to join your class and you give them a code, right? But in this case, I don't have a code, so I'm going to create a team, right? And the reason I'm doing this again is so that I have a notebook for each student, okay? Because I can do this the other way where I control all the notes and I don't have access to student notes. But the way I'm going to show you is so that you can have an interactive notebook with them, okay? So I'm going to show you how to create a class here. So you click on class. Remember, this session is being recorded so that you can have access to this if I'm going too fast. Okay. Now, it says that I'm the owner of the team and students can participate as members. So I'm just going to make one called AP US History. Okay. And I want you to notice that down here, it gives me a preview of what this is going to say to kids when they sign up. Right now, I don't like how Riverside High School and AP US History is all together. So I'm going to put a hyphen before my name here. Okay, so that, that way it says Riverside High School dash AP US History. I click Next. Okay. And what this is doing is what Google Classroom does. It's creating a class called Riverside High School AP US History. Right. Now I can start adding students here, or I can just go ahead and give them a code so they can sign up. Right. Now in this case, I'm going to skip this. 
just so that you can see the point of what I'm trying to show you. Okay, so I skip that. And I want you to notice that I'm in the class now, right? So <coughs> like a, this is like a Google Classroom. But this is Microsoft's version of Google Classroom. Now I'm not gonna get into how this works because I'm gonna do that on Thursday. On Thursday, I have a whole session on how to use this instead of Google Classroom. Right? And I'll show you on that day the advantages that I think this has over Google Classroom. But for the purposes of today, all I want to show you is this part right here that says Class Notebook. Okay? Up here, I click, and what this is, is OneNote, the app, but it's integrated into Microsoft Teams. It's inside of Microsoft Teams. And the reason it's here so that you can give your students a space where they can set up their notebook and then where you can send them notes or where you can store uh, lectures or audio or video of whatever you say in class it's all in one place and you can always access it from any computer be it a chromebook be it a, a laptop be it their phone as long as they have the OneNote app they can still access this information so i'm going to select here where it says set up okay I'm going to click on blank notebook, okay? And then it, it gives me a rundown of what I'm going to get when I enter this information. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it better, okay? And here's what it's going to give me. It says it's going to give me a collaboration space. Think of this as an area where you and your students can write down at the same time. It's like when you open the Google document and all your students can write in there at the same time. This is the same concept. The teacher can edit and the students can edit as well. Now, I'm going to turn this off for uh, when I start classes this year because I don't want kids to just be putting stuff randomly on there. I'm going to open it up when we have meetings. So when we have actual calls, I'll have that space open. Then we have the content library. This is where I will publish material to my students. So only I can edit and the students can only view that material. They cannot change it. This is the teacher only section where only I can see the content, the students cannot see the content, right? So if I have some notes I'm preparing for them for later, I can put it right there. And then finally, each student gets their own notebook. This is why I'm giving you this session today, because I'm, I'm trying to show you that each student can have their own virtual notebook where they can store their own content. And then you as the teacher can go in there and check their work. So this is the beauty of this program, that a student keeps their notebook and you at any point in time can go in there and check what they're doing in their notebook, okay? It's like if you had access to all those binders in that basket that you're gonna grade, but this time they're all virtual right here in front of you. So I'm gonna go ahead and create it. Just miss this, click next, okay? And it's gonna give me these sections that each student is gonna get in their own notebook. Now, if you have a preferred way of setting up your students' notebooks, you can do that here. You can call this whatever you want. If you don't wanna call it handouts and you wanna call it Maybe Coach Solis wants current events, right? Something like that. Uh, you can do that. So you can modify this into any way you want. And if you don't want a quizzes section, you can remove that. You can add sections if you like. The possibilities are there for you. So you, I, I like it the way it is. I'm going to click Create. Okay. So now it's getting my notebook ready. Okay. All right, tell me in the, in the chat or let me know verbally if, if you have any questions so far for me. Okay, good, let me get a sip of water here real quick. So that's how you set up a class notebook, okay? That's part one of today's presentation. Hey, Ms. Gonzalez, it's nice to see you. So, once you've got this class notebook set up, you're gonna to wanna to know what to do with it, right? So let me show you what to do. So this first page you're getting here is kind of like a welcome. So that kids that have never used OneNote in their life can understand that this is like a digital binder. Okay? It has sections, it has pages, it has divisions, right? So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. It says right here, it's a digital notebook. It has the student notebooks, it has the content library and the collaboration space. Um, how to use it gives you kind of uh, some clues here, how to make the most of it, right? But what I want to show you is what you can actually do with it, right? So I already have a class where I have students, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. But right now, I just want to show you how it looks like when you don't have any students in there yet, okay? So just like a binder has dividers, this one has dividers as well. Notice I have a welcome page. I have an FAQ, which is a frequently asked questions. 
If a student doesn't know how to do something, it has links here that'll help them out. If you don't know how to do something, it has links here that can help you out as well, right? And the next divider is the collaboration space. This is where I tell you that you and your students can go in and write down things that you want to write down. Let's say you're watching a video together and you want them all to, to start telling you what they thought about the video. You can add a page right here, right? And in this page, you tell students, all right, uh, tell me your thoughts, right? I want to know what you thought about this video that we just watched. And then students can go in here anywhere in the page. The beauty of, of OneNote is that it's not like a regular document. It's like a canvas where you can write anywhere you want. Uh, and then students can start telling you at the same time what they thought, right? So that's the collaboration space, a space where you and your students can write at the same time. It's like a whiteboard, right? Mr. Gallegos, can I ask you a question? Yes. Go ahead, Zina. Will you know which student is writing or do they yes. have to be name? That's the thing that since they're signed in with their YASD account, you can always see who modified the, the, the canvas. So it's always going to include their little name, just on Google Docs. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, so you've got the content library here, and that is the space where I mentioned earlier that you add materials and your students will all get them into their notebooks, right? So anything here, let's say I have a page with the current news, uh, I don't know, uh, Joe Biden selected Kamala Harris to be her vice presidential candidate. So I put that in here and I want all students to get that. They're gonna get access to it as soon as they log in, right? You don't have to go and send something. You don't have to go and post anything. It's all right here as soon as you add it. Okay? And you make a mistake, let's say that you didn't like the fact that you uploaded it so early, you could just delete it, right? You could just permanently delete that section, right? It's easy. Now the teacher only section is the place where only you can see what's, what's in here. So it doesn't have any kind of uh, viewing privilege for the student. It's a private space for your materials. Let's say that it's your lesson planner. I, I don't know, you wanna, like it says here, you wanna include uh, stuff for the sub or whatever you're doing. Uh, it's all right here, right? So that's kind of how this looks like. Now, it, this is kind of like the, the menu bar here. This is where you add sections to your binder. And this is where you add pages to your binder, right? And I'm going to show you one that is already uh, populated with students so that you can see how students would get materials from me, okay? So I'm going to go back to my teams here. And I'm going to go to one that I already had added students to, okay? Last week when I was prepping on my own, I looked at my rosters and I pulled out all my human geo students here and I added them in, okay? Since I've never had any contact with them, I've never talked to them before. I just kind of added them myself. Mr. Gallegos? Yes, ma'am. You have to go in there manually and add them? That's my, my, uh, my one of my two options, I'm sorry. My, my other option is just giving them a code, just like on Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So here is my uh, team Thank for, you. no problem. This is my team for AP Human Geography. I'm going to go to Class Notebook. And the only thing you're going to see different here is that this one is going to have student names, right? No, yep, sorry about that. That's my daughter. <laughs> anyway, I have here uh, the, the class notebook for that class. And as soon as this loads, you're going to see here on the left the students' names. All right, give me a thumbs up if you're clear so far on what I'm doing. Give me a thumbs down if you need me to clarify. Okay. All right, good, cool, okay. All right, so I'm gonna go to my left here. You're gonna see a whole lot more happening on this one because now I have actual student names here. This is populated on its own as soon as I add students to this team, okay? So you don't have to be the one adding things in here, adding student names and creating their notebooks. This is done all by itself. So I'm going to go here to Andrea's uh, notebook and let's say that I had asked them to, uh, I don't know, look at a handout and then give me their, uh, their thoughts about the handout, right? Well, I, I can populate something in here and the beauty about this is that I could just drag a document in here and it'll just automatically load onto her handout section, right? Let's say that she's not the only one that needs this handout. Let's say that all my students need the handout. Well, I go to my content library and I create the handout here and then I just distribute it to all my students. Okay. That's the beauty of this. Now, as the students get the handout, 
then I can go ahead and see what they're doing with it by going into each student's handout section. Or I could just go to one menu where it shows me every student's handout section and then I can just select each student's uh, page. Right? So I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna pull out a document that I have here and I'm gonna put it in the content library. So I'm gonna go to the content library here. And then I'm gonna create a page. And remember the content library is where I add materials that I want students to see, but I don't want them to change. So I don't want them to be able to change or modify anything on there, right? So I'm gonna pull this document in here, and I'm gonna add it to this page. Okay. All I did was that I went to my, my um, file explorer, my Windows Explorer, and then I just dragged something in here. But for some reason, it's not showing up. So I'm gonna go to insert file, uh, insert as a printout. If I want it to actually show up, I'm gonna put it in there real quick. Uh, Abigail Adams, there we go. So this puts the file in my student's uh, content library. So if I want the kids to just see this file here, it's gonna be showing up here in my content library. Okay. So every kid is gonna have access to this file here. Let's say that I don't want it to stay here. I want it to actually go to all my students' um, notebooks, right? So I'm gonna click here on class notebook, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna click on distribute page. This is where it gets interesting because if you have one student that needs a document, not all of them, you can click on an individual distribution. Or if you have a group of students that need this document because they were out for basketball or whatnot, uh, you can click on group distribution and you can select specific students that need this document. Right? This is the beauty of this, that you're the one in control of who gets what. You don't have to put it in everybody's uh, handout section if you don't need if they don't need the document right so i'm going to just click on individual here because i want to show you who's going to get it right and it's just going to be andrea so i get a menu over here on the right that says individual distribution all right so i'm going to select andrea's name here okay And I'm gonna click on next. And this is asking me which part of her notebook do I want it to go to? Well, I want it to go to handouts, right? And I'm gonna click on distribute. And what this did is that it just sent the document to her specifically, right? Just to one student, right? And this would work the same if you wanted it for a group or if you wanted it for all the students. You would just select the one you want. Let's so say you have a whole section of pages that you want to give to your students. Well, then you're just going to go to this distribute section uh, section right here. But let's say that you and your students were writing something together and some good ideas came out. You can copy that to the content library. Right? But let's say that I gave them the handout and I actually want to see Andrea's work. I'm going to click here on review student work. Okay. And I'm going to click on Andrea's uh, handout section to see what she's done in her notebook, right? I'm gonna click on handouts, and I'm gonna review the page for Andrea. And this is gonna show me in real time what Andrea's done in her notebook. So if Andrea is still writing in here, I would see the edits as they're happening. So it's like if you have access to their screen. Okay. All right, what questions do you have for me right now? Because I know that I did this section a little quick. What questions do you have for me? I have a quick question. Um, Go ahead. On, well, I, I just noticed you stayed on Teams the whole time. So yes. if the students are working mm -hmm. from their Chromebooks, yes. how well is Teams going to function within their Chromebook? That's a great question, Ms. Reyes, and I prepared for that because I'm going to use this with my students as well. So I'm going to show you uh, how I would approach that, that issue, right? I'm going to go ahead and go back to another tab here. 
and I'm going to go to my.yst.net. And I thought about that same question that you have, Ms. Rilas, because I realized that all our students have Chromebooks. And Chromebooks, being Google devices, have never really played well with Microsoft tools. And I acknowledge that completely. So the way that I'm going to work around this is that I'm going to ask my students to go here to their uh, app selector, right? To the little wolf or whatever they call it. And I'm going to have them go directly to either OneNote or to Teams. And what they're going to get is the web version of one of these programs. And so if I go to OneNote, for example, here, what I get is the web version of OneNote. And my students would see this as well when they log into their Chromebook, right? And the beauty of this is that I have access to all the notebooks that I've ever had in here, right here on this menu. So the one that I was just working at right now is this one. Okay. Um, I'm going to select it. So that you see how it looks on OneNote web, right? Okay. So the student would arrive here on this website and what they get is the online version of OneNote notebook, right? And they would see any kind of team that they're a part of, and they would see any kind of notes that I have just distributed to them in here. They can add their own sections they want to their own notebook because they don't have access to anyone else's notebook. They only have access to their own. And so here's the web version. Get a little what's new menu here. But of course, my students would not see other students' names. They would only see their own name here, and they would see the content library and the collaboration space because I've made those two available to students. They would not see my teacher-only section, and they would not see my behind-the-scenes uh, notebook. Right? So if I was Andrea, I was logging in here, I would see this welcome page, of course, and I would go to my own notebook, and I would see in my handouts what's going on. Mr. Gallegos posted something. Uh, here's the untitled page, and uh, here's the document that I loaded for her earlier. Right. Does it alert the students when you place something in there? That's a great question, Mr. Martinez. I, I, the only way a student can see a notification is if they either have the Teams app on their phone or if they go to Teams online. So the same process that I followed here to show Ms. Relas to go to OneNote, same thing that students can do to go to Teams, just like we did at the beginning of the session. And Teams acts like a kind of like a social media feed where the students can see every kind of update that they get. They can see it as a notification. So, so when the students are working, are go they ahead, going go into OneNote or are they going into Teams? Yes. The, the student can have either, either option. I, I'm honestly not even supposed to be doing Teams right now, but I guess that was my mistake that I spent so much time on here. But the students are gonna use either OneNote by itself or they can use Teams. Uh, I'm personally gonna have them use Teams because that's gonna be my whole LMS, my learning management system. But in order to create it, we need to go on Teams. Correct, you go into Teams and if you don't wanna use Teams for any other purpose than to just create the notebook, you do that and then you get out of here and then you just go to OneNote. And okay, my last question, sorry. Well, Mr. Mr. Gallegos, so what you're saying is we create teams for our classes yes, and then the students can access their notebooks through notebook? Correct, the students can access their notebook through OneNote. Ms. Martinez, you were going to ask me? Yes, um, is there a way to export the entire notebook? Um, only because robotics is looking, part of the competition is, is a notebook where they track all their progress on their robot, and they're looking at creating a digital notebook to be judged, to be sent out and judged. Oh, okay, so. If they were to create the notebook, no. can it be exported in some sort of fashion in its entirety, or no? That's an answer that I don't have for you. Uh, okay. The only answer that I have for you is probably not the answer you're, you're, you're looking for, <laughs> and that is that I, I know a way to share the notebook as, okay. as a link, uh, but I, I do not know of a way to export it. That's a so great I can question. share a student's notebook as a link and correct. they can click on it to view everything on, the, on their notebook. That is correct, that is correct. Okay. 
And even if kids have never used Teams or have never used OneNote, what you can do to get them on here, to get them working as soon as you uh, create it, is to get the link to the notebook, right? So <clears throat> what I'm gonna show you here is a way to get the link to the notebook. Okay, uh, where is this? When you click on open in browser, it's gonna give you this long link here. That's the link that I would send my students or that I would post on a website and kids would get access to this, be it that they're logged into the YSD. All right, what other questions do you have for me here? Hey, Daniel. Yes. Yeah, uh, out of curiosity. So you're not using Google Classroom, right? You're using Teams, is that what you're doing for your LMS? I've been using Google Classroom for a long time, Mr. Villardel, but this is the year where I'm going to take the plunge and use Microsoft Teams. Okay, yeah, I, I haven't really used Google Classroom because I use Edmodo. And I was just curious about this. Yeah, I've, I've talked to my team and what I was telling them is that I've reached the limit with Google Classroom uh, in terms of my own sanity. I'm going crazy with it because it's just so slow on me all the time. And then there's just too many things that I can't do inside it that I need other apps for. So I figured I want an app where I can contact students, where I can have all the content at the same time, and where I can video chat with them at the same time. And this is the tool for me. That and that will grade quizzes for you automatically. And That's right. That. That's right. This, this has integration. Thank you for mentioning that, Mr. Villardel, because this has integration with Microsoft Forms, which is the Google Forms of Microsoft. And you're right, we can make quizzes and we can have them auto grade on here. That's what Edmodo does. It automatically grades them and, and keeps an actual grade book for you. So there you go. Nice. There you go. That's the beauty of this whole system. All right, so, so far what I've shown you is how to set up a class notebook and how to organize it. Okay. Now what I'm, I'm going to show you right now is, is how to create content and how to differentiate content for you and your students, right? So, um, the beauty of this is that you can add whatever you like to a OneNote page, right? And just so that I don't, uh, I guess, continue on Teams, I'm gonna actually open up OneNote so that you can see what I can do on OneNote, okay? I'm gonna sh stop sharing this for a second and I'm gonna show you OneNote. Now, if you're on our district issued laptop, um, you have a great, great advantage because you have a touch screen and OneNote is the perfect canvas for you to write on your, on your uh, screen. Okay. So I'm going to show you that capability in a second. Uh, I'm just catching up with the chat here while this loads. Ms. Gonzalez, yeah, I'm going to use Teams. Uh, like I was telling Mr. Villardel, I think I'm just done with Google Classroom. Um, and the session that I do on Thursday, uh, it's going to be all about Teams, so I'm going to show you why I'm picking Teams over Google Classroom. Okay. All right, so let me share that screen with you here so that you can see what I see. Uh, one quick question while you load. So yes, uh, have you thought about how students are going to, because I was thinking about Teams too, but I'm thinking if a student is working off of their cell phone and that is the only device um, that they have where they have most of their internet data. Mm -hmm. What will they need to download to their phone? Just OneNote? To tell you the truth, Ms. Relas, I'm going to have them download Microsoft Teams. And the, the OneNote is going to spring up on them if they want to use the class notebook. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell them specifically, you also have to download the OneNote app. Um, so you'll have them do just one download, the full Teams, maybe go to something and download it because I know it's huge. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, OneNote will be embedded in there. Okay. Yeah, correct. And, and I know a lot of kids will, will uh, complain about it and, and I'm going to be, my, my justification is going to be not every company in the world uses Google tools. That's right. And, and the reason I'm picking these tools for you is because they're more accessible. And because they're going to give you an advantage over people that only know how to use Google tools. Okay. All right. So here I am on OneNote. Do you all see? Give me a thumbs up if you see OneNote here, please. Sort of. 
It's so got, I got a uh, reduced That's screen. I only see a reduced screen. Of it. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me let me uh, make that a little a little bit resize this here. Okay. Is that any better? No. 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 It's like your desktop has uh, gone four by three instead of sixteen by nine. That is interesting. Black bars on either side, pillar box, and it's your resolution has changed. There you go. Wow, okay. it's high resolution now. <laughs> okay, is that a uh, is all right? But yeah. Let me let me write something in here. See if you can see, you can see that. Okay. I'm gonna pull that to my other screen. I can see Monday, August tenth, twenty twenty. Okay, then there you go. Okay, now you're super wide screen. The the print got a lot smaller though. Let me zoom into this so that you can see it better. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna write a, a a math formula in here for my math people that are here, so that you can see the kind of capabilities this has. Okay, so I'm gonna use my left screen here for a second. So give me one moment while I write this incredibly complex math formula for you. Okay, the reason I pulled it off the screen is because I'm using the touch screen. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna show you now what I wrote. All right, do you see 3x squared? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So I was playing around with this yesterday, and I noticed that for math teachers in specific, this is an awesome tool. It has so many capabilities, but I'm also going to show all my social studies and English people out there when you come here. Okay? Uh, and I'm not forgetting about my electives people. Don't worry. Okay. All right. I'm going to show you here uh, an awesome tool that this is going to be a game changer for you all in math. So I just wrote this out and I'm a student, I'm using my phone or, or I just typed it up. Uh, I'm gonna show you something cool here. I select this, okay? And then OneNote has a tool called uh, Ink to Math, okay? So I'm gonna show you how that works. I select this, um, click on right here, math, okay? And notice it recognized the equation here, okay? I hope you can see that I'm pointing to the actual equation written out. Yeah. Now, yeah. if, this, if this didn't detect it correctly, if I maybe made that look like a seven instead of a two, I could fix it. I could click fix and it should allow me to change what I wrote. But I'm just gonna ink this to math, okay? And so it's gonna turn this into an actual uh, math equation here. Okay? Now, I as a student uh, wanna solve for X. So this gives me the, uh, the uh, information that I needed here. I'm gonna delete that one there. So this gives me a nice, uh, response here, okay. Uh, let me try this one more time. Okay, so left action. All right, so this is uh, much simpler for you to see. Now, if I'm learning quadratic formula, I I'm gonna click here and, and I'm gonna show for all of my math solution, right? And I'm not a math person, so I'm not gonna bore you here with the details of this, but what I wanna show you is something that is gonna help you differentiate for students regardless of what subject they're in. Um, this, every Microsoft tool now has something called the immersive reader, okay? And the immersive reader comes out in the form of this icon. So if you ever see this little book with a speaker on it, okay? You click it and what it's gonna do is that it's gonna change your screen to what they call the immersive reader. Now the immersive reader is gonna break down all the text inside the page and make it nice and bright for students to be able to follow, okay? Now, the beauty of this is that it has audio. So if you want to hear out loud what the text says, you're going to click on play, and it's going to read out loud to you the steps for using the correct formula. Now, I don't know if you were able to hear that, but the narrator yeah. just told me, uh, oh, I might be because I'm not sharing my audio with you, I'm sorry. The narrator told me specifically uh, what each part of the equation uh, meant, right? Now, the immersive reader is awesome because you don't just have to use it with math. You can use it with anything, right? If I drop a PDF in here, or if I drop a Word document in here, I can have that immersive reader read out loud to my students. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you how the immersive reader works outside of OneNote. Let's say that I'm a student on a Chromebook, okay? And I went out to... Uh, <coughs> 
to um, my OneNote notebook here, right? And, and I want to be able to read what this says, for example, okay? Uh, actually, this would work better if I show you a Word document, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna include a Word document in here. File. Okay. Any questions for me so far while I load this? <laughs> yeah, as, as far as you've been able to tell, <clears throat> are there any documents that it will not be compatible with? Yeah, that's a great question, Oscar. The, the one thing that I noticed with this is that it takes almost anything. As long as you can print something, instead of sending it to the printer, you select Microsoft OneNote. Uh, it'll take almost anything. Um, that's what I use to input like a, a spreadsheet. I've, I've used it to input a PowerPoint presentation. There's just so many possibilities here. Right? So I had this here that I wanted students to complete. Um, if I want students to see this on their notebook like this, they can again go to OneNote online or if they have the OneNote app, they can see it. But um, I'm thinking that the immersive reader is not going to pop out here because this is uh, I'm sorry, it's not being recognized as a. Are you on the? Are you like on a web page? Because we're still seeing your your um, OneNote page. Oh, you're still seeing my OneNote. I'm so sorry. I forgot to share that with you. Okay. Let me let me share that that web page with you. Okay. So I I put this document in here online so that you can see how it looks. Now the beauty of this is that the kids have access to it on any computer. They can uh, write on it if they like. They can mark it as long as it's in their own student notebook. Right? Um, whenever I send them a handout, they're going to be able to annotate. Right? So I'm going to show you uh, an annotation here. Okay, so if you have an essay that you want students to look at, uh, Ms. Lada or, or Zena, if you have a formula sheet that you want them to annotate, they're going to be able to do that here, right? Um, and yeah, there's, there's so many more things that I could show you right now, but um, I'm just kind of touching the surface. If you as the teacher want to give them feedback on their work, uh, you can click on the audio button here and you can record audio uh, as long as it allows, <clears throat> as long as you allow your microphone to be selected here, it'll record audio and it'll embed it on the page so that the student can then open it up and see what you commented on, right? Hey, uh, Johnny, I noticed that you didn't uh, use the quadratic formula or hey, Juan, uh, you didn't read that paragraph over there, right? All those things are available for you here. Okay. All right, questions, comments? On, on <laughs> one of the things that came across on in Google Classroom, yes, uh, for ex specifically like with Google Docs, mm -hmm. and you know you you give them each a copy to work on, but yes. what they're able to do is you know they they type directly on the Google Doc and then they can submit it, uh -huh. but and you know the cheating thing where they can just kind of share it, with yeah. Everybody. Um, are they, how much of that is possible here with OneNote? You know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here, Oscar, and tell you that kids aren't going to cheat with OneNote. Um, they'll find a way, right? Where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, but what I will tell you is that, um, at least on my end, um, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep an eye out for it. Um, that's all I can do, really. I can't control if they cheat or not, right? Uh, but even on Google Classroom, I, I caught a few students and, and I mean, I had consequences for them. Uh, I remember meeting with some parents over plagiarism at least twice last semester. So it's going to happen. Um, I don't know exactly how they would do it here, to tell you the truth. But um, I'm not going to lie, they're probably going to find a way. Mr. Gallegos, what about maps? Can we, can we post maps here? You know, because it's a lot difficult to put in those text boxes using Absolutely. the other format. How, how would it work? Sorry, because that geography, right? So that's a great question. Let's find out right now. Let's look for an outline map. 
and let's put it in so that you can see. Okay. So I'm on a new tab here and I just look for an outline map for Ms. Bustillos. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include it in here and I'm gonna ask students to, I don't know, find the capital of, of whatever place that I'm looking at, right? So this is a live demo, so beware of the images that might pop out here. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select this image here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna save it. Okay, <laughs> and then I'm gonna include it in my notebook. Okay. Save it on my desktop. Okay. So I go back to my OneNote notebook. Okay, and I'm gonna click Insert. I'm gonna find that image okay, from file. And so for that map here real quick. And the image should populate here. And there we go. So now Ms. Bustillos, uh, I would have my kids, I don't know, uh, draw me the, uh, the rivers or whatnot. And, and they can go ahead and mark over it. Right. And there you go. Okay. You know, I had never done that until right now that you put me on the spot. So thanks for giving me an easy one. <laughs> All right. Any other uh, questions, comments, concerns? It worries me. And this, I've never used that. You think you, you should have been presenting this week instead of what we've been hearing? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Zina, thank you. That's. That's very kind of you. Hey, by any chance, would this notebook travel with them? Like if I yes, decided to do this for engineering and they started their engineering notebook their ninth grade year and I wanted them to continue growing with it their sophomore, junior, senior year and keep adding to it with those new projects, can yes. that happen? Like would I transfer yes. it to the new teacher or how does that work? So Mr. Martinez, what I have seen is that a teacher will ask them to archive their own notebook um, I don't know the process right now, but I'll find the video and I'll share it with you specifically so you can see the process. Uh, but the students will download the notebook and then uh, they can upload it into their new notebook that their new teacher sets up. So oh, okay. that's nice. one, one process. Any other questions for me? Comments, concerns? I uh, wish I hadn't missed the first 15 minutes of this thing. It's recorded, sir. Oh, so the you other have session, access yeah. to the video. Yeah. Okay, whenever that goes up, I take a peek at it because I haven't used OneNote at all. Actually, I haven't even reused Teams other than a couple mm -hmm. of sessions that I had to, you know, sit in on. But um, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting to see what else is out there. Yeah, I'm not that crazy about Google Classroom, but I mean, everybody seems to be using it, but it's clumsy in many ways. I agree. And one thing I'm going to tell you is that I've always used OneNote uh, for myself. And in class, I'll mark up documents and I'll show students uh, diagrams and things like that. But I've never used the class notebook because I never saw a need for it. I always had students with a physical notebook. But this year, we don't have access to, to physical notebooks anymore. So here's my solution. Anything else that you would like me to... To discuss or, or if you want a demo of something else I can show you. Hey, is there a way um, other than paper I guess right now in my class mine's a practicum class yes, sir. and I'm going to have to send a lot of documents home for parents signatures mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering if there's a legal way of doing this through OneNote where I can post it and then somehow they would sign it and that would do. Um, because I need to get some photo releases and I also need to get uh, practicum documentation uh, for the state, for TEA. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of paperwork that has to be signed by the parents. I can uh, imagine, Mr. Riedel, I, I, I can't answer you that question without yeah. getting into legal trouble, right? But uh, what I will tell you is that it's, it's possible technically. I don't know if it's allowable legally, right? But, yeah, I mean, I was looking at this little drawing thing. I know it's a pain to be able to draw on the screen Yes. I wonder if they could sign it that way. Yeah. I've been forced to do that with documents uh, for my house lately because I don't have access to a printer. So I've just do yeah. it with my, with my mouse. <laughs> Most of my kids, I'd say more than half of them don't have a computer at home other than a Chromebook. 
There you go. And uh, probably most of them don't even, most of those don't even have a printer at all or a scanner. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, it's, this is one of those things that I haven't figured out. TA requires a documentation within the mm -hmm. first 15 school days. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one for you, sir, I can imagine. Yeah, okay, well, let's see how it goes. Good luck. Any other comments? Uh, any other things you would like me to do? Uh, I just had a I had just had a quick question. Have you tried um, to download or has, have you known of anyone who's tried to download Teams into a student Chromebook? Will it, will it allow them? Will they have permission? I, Cause I have Teams on my teacher computer and I use it, but will the Chromebooks on the kids um, limited an answer for you, Ms. Uh, permissions, will they be able to download? I don't have an answer for you Teams. on the Chromebooks. Uh, because you're, you're right, I, I don't think they have the permission to download. And I don't even know if the Chromebooks allow a Microsoft download. Uh, that's something that I'll ask Sergio, the uh, tech guy, to mm -hmm. answer for you. Because I know like um, I downloaded Minecraft for my daughter um, in the summer. Mm -hmm. And it was called 41010 and they logged in and they had permission and they were able to download it. So maybe something okay. like that would have yeah. to be done. but. I think that's a good workaround, and, and if not, I think that the web version so far has worked. So uh, I think that would be a good plan. B. Yeah. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Is there even a Teams for a Chromebook? I've never seen the actual Chromebook interfacer whenever they download apps, so I, I would not be able to answer a question for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. The web is going to be the best solution to them, mm -hmm. I think. Yes, sir. I tried, honestly, I, I racked my brain about this for a whole week. I, I thought, is it worth it? Is it worth the headache to try and get kids to do something else? But in my opinion, it is. In my opinion, it is. 41010 is not going to be able to do that because if you think of how many students are out there, they're going to be so busy. Yes, they're sir. not. And everybody's going to have Chromebooks or laptops or whatever. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, you're not going to get It'll a response mm -hmm. until sometime next year. It'll be difficult, yeah. All right, everybody. Well, I've uh, hopefully accomplished these four things with you today. I showed you how to set up the class notebook, how to organize it, how to create pages and create content for your students, and then how to differentiate, how to show them how to read using the immersive reader and how to uh, use the tools like the math tools. So I hope that this was worth your time. I hope that you learned something. And I hope that you... Uh, Jump ship with me and, and you uh, go to to OneNote. <laughs> and if well, I'll be using Edmodo, but uh, I, I may use some of the OneNote stuff. Great. Because there's some things I'm sure that they can't do. I've got great. everything in Edmodo. I've got tests for years already and to transfer everything over. I can't learn so. how to use the testing interface either. Do, do what works for you. I yeah. am not here to, to uh, convert anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm only, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm only a missionary for, for, uh, <laughs> for my... All right, everybody. Well, unless you have any other questions for me, uh, my... I just need the link so I can do parts uh, one and two and part of three. Uh, sure. you get we, will, we will post that and uh, we'll get that as, as soon as we have it. We'll get that to cool. you. Right. Any thanks? If you have questions, stick around. Okay, I'm looking at the chat and I'm seeing all Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And it'll be transferred to other teachers. That was Mr. Martinez. <laughs> Ms. Gatte wants me to call her, okay. Um, <laughs> Ms. Gonzalez is not sure if she should switch a week. It didn't disappoint, by the way. I'm going to do it. I don't know good, if it's Zina. good or not, but I'm going to try it. Hey, girl, I think that it's worth it for you, especially with all the... the yeah, I didn't know that math stuff. With I all mean, the 